Hello, my name is Ken Hayworth, and I'm the president and co-founder of the Brain Preservation Foundation. The Brain Preservation Foundation, or BPF, is a science advocacy organization. Our mission is to advocate for the development of a medical preservation procedure that can preserve those structural and molecular components of the brain that modern neuroscience thinks encode memory and personality. For example, the synaptic connectivity of the brain, the ultrastructural details of synapses that are correlated with their strengths, and any molecular information like the identities and locations of ion channels and receptor proteins that may also be needed to decode memories. A reasonable question to ask is, why on earth are you advocating for a medical procedure that admittedly cannot save a terminal patient's life, but instead only gives the patient the option to have their brain preserved in a static state upon their death? Why would any terminal patient be comforted by the idea that their brain's detailed structure will be preserved and stored sitting on a shelf indefinitely, when their brain's biological functioning cannot be preserved? The answer is that brain preservation offers a terminal patient a slim but non-zero chance of revival in the far future. Of course, this is precisely the argument put forward by traditional chronics. Stabilize the patient in a static state, for example using extreme cold, for however many decades or centuries is needed for humanity to develop a cure to their illness and a way to revive them. Unlike cryonics, however, we fully accept the fact that current science simply is nowhere near close to achieving reversible cryopreservation for humans. Today's attempts at human cryopreservation produce so much damage that any hypothetical future revival would be better viewed as reconstruction from a damaged blueprint. With this unfortunate fact in mind, we believe that the best that can be hoped for today is to develop a procedure designed specifically to preserve those molecular and nanoscale structures of the brain that encode long-term memories, a goal that is within reach today. Let me carefully lay out our reasoning. First of all, modern neuroscience is based on the idea that our conscious thoughts are solely a product of particular types of neuronal computations in our physical brain. Since these computations cease at death, the conscious mind disappears as well. But these computations also cease temporarily during sleep, general anesthesia, and medical procedures like deep hypothermic circulatory arrest. The implication is that there is no continuity of consciousness. We pop out of existence every night and reboot every morning. The illusion of continuity rests in our long-term memories. Our true self is more correctly viewed as being the sum total of our long-term memories, broadly defined to include all of the genetic and learned knowledge in our brain. Death is simply our neuronal computations shutting down for the last time and never rebooting. Brain preservation's goal is to preserve in a static state the neuronal structures that encode a patient's long-term memories, stopping them from being permanently destroyed as the body decays. As long as the patient's unique set of long-term memories is preserved, at least the possibility of rebooting them in the future exists. When we look at the tremendous pace of scientific and technological advancement today, we see every reason to believe that humanity's progress will continue until we, one, have a comprehensive computational understanding of the brain. Two, have the technology needed to scan a preserved brain's molecular and nanoscale structure in order to decode its long-term memories and function. And three, have the expertise needed to simulate that brain's computations to control a robotic or virtual body. Now, of course, we fully appreciate how outlandishly difficult it will be to perfect such mind-uploading technology. It may take a century or more to do so. 
That is why it is essential that brains are preserved in a manner that can remain unchanging for centuries. Now in the future, simulating a preserved brain would, in effect, reboot the original person's mental computations, along with their long-term memories. It would feel to that uploaded mind like it had reawakened from a long sleep in the future in a healthy new robotic or virtual body. From this perspective, it should now be clear why some terminal patients facing certain oblivion today could find this possibility desirable. Of course, many patients would never choose such a brain preservation option for themselves, for religious, social, philosophical, or other reasons. But please understand that some terminal patients would, especially those who, like us, fully accept the neuroscience view that the human mind is computational and that want to continue their fight for a chance to see the future firsthand. Seven years ago, my organization put out a challenge prize called the Brain Preservation Prize uh, to the chronics community to challenge them to demonstrate that their methods are able to preserve at least the synaptic connectivity of the brain. This milestone was chosen as a crystal clear concrete milestone that both the chronic advocates and the chronic skeptics could understand and accept to bring them together to work toward a common goal if you will unfortunately seven years later the chronic community has not yet been able to demonstrate that their methods preserve even the synaptic connectivity of the brain but we put out this challenge to the larger scientific community as well. And at least one team was able to demonstrate a new technique called aldehyde stabilized cryopreservation that can preserve the synaptic connectivity of the brain and much more. That group was the cryobiology research company, 21st Century Medicine, and was led by lead researcher, Robert McIntyre. They developed a technique which combined glutaraldehyde perfusion fixation, which is something that is very common in neuroscience research, with cryoprotectant and long-term cryostorage of brains. And what they showed is that they could preserve entire rabbit and pig brains using this technique. And using 3D electron microscopy, they could show that they had preserved those brains at the ultrastructural level, preserving the precise synaptic connectivity of those brains. But this procedure did more than preserving the synaptic connectivity, the structure of the brain at the tens of nanometer scale. Because this procedure is based on simple glutaraldehyde perfusion fixation, it also likely preserves the most important sets of biomolecules involved in neuronal computation ion channels, and receptor proteins. Now that the Brain Preservation Prize has been won, BPF is shifting its focus toward engaging more with the neuroscientific, medical, and medical ethics communities, as well as the larger society. To the neuroscience community, we want to ask the following question. Do you think that aldehyde-stabilized cryopreservation is preserving the content of uh, the information content of a brain. If not, what additional molecules and structures need to be preserved in order to do so? There can be no guarantee that any preservation technique is sufficient, but what we are asking is given our current models of memory, of how memory is stored in the brain, does ASC preservation seem sufficient and if not, what is missing and what might be done to correct this. To the medical community, we want to issue a challenge to develop the ASC procedure, or something better, into a full medical procedure that could be applied reliably in hospitals to terminally ill patients. To the medical ethics community, we understand that the idea of brain preservation is very different from any other medical procedure that is existing today. And we want to ask you, is there any framework 
that would allow brain preservation to be applied to terminally ill patients that choose this for themselves in an ethical manner. A framework that ensures that each patient has truly given informed consent and has a full understanding of the speculative nature of the endeavor. And our challenge to the larger society is to simply try to envision a world in which affordable, reliable brain preservation is the right of all people and is available in every hospital in the world to every patient facing a terminal illness.